This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Last week marked the one-year anniversary of the passing of Luis Garden Acosta, the founder and longtime president of the nationally known El Puente Youth and Community Leadership Program in Brooklyn. Long regarded as one of New York City's foremost human rights and Latino community activists, Garden died last January at the age of 72. A former seminarian who'd been active in the Catholic anti-war movement, Garden joined the Young Lords Party in 1970 and later founded the group's Massachusetts chapter while he was still a student at Harvard Medical School. Luis Garden Acosta went on to pioneer successful nonviolent direct action campaigns against segregated public schools and against environmental racism here in New York City. In his later years, together with his wife, Frances Lucerna, Garden Acosta created an alternative public high school geared toward human rights activism, the El Puente Academy for Peace and Justice. Well, to honor his legacy, we're joined now by the renowned poet Martina Spada. He is a professor of English at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, author of more than 20 books. His latest collection of poems is called Vivas to Those Who Have Failed. You wrote a poem, Martin, dedicated to Luis Garden Acosta. I was wondering if you could talk about him and share your poem with us. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, Luis Garden Acosta was uh, an organizational genius. He was a visionary. He was also a beloved friend and mentor. Um, and uh, I wrote this poem based on an encounter that I had with Luis. Uh, at the beginning of uh, El Puente. Um, it's called Morir Soñando, which means to die dreaming. Morir Soñando, for Luis Garden Acosta, 1945 to 2019, Brooklyn, New York. I saw the empty cross atop the empty church on South 4th Street as if Jesus flapped his arms and flew away, spooked by one ambulance siren too many. I saw the stained glass windows I wanted to break with a brick, the mural of St. Mary and the angels hovering innocent as spies over the congregation. I wanted to know why you brought me here, the son of a man punched in the face by a priest for questioning the Trinity, who punched him back. This is El Puente you said, the bridge. I knew about the Williamsburg Bridge, eight lanes of traffic and the subway stampeding in the open windows of the barrio all summer. You spread your arms in that abandoned church and saw the spinning of a carousel better than any wooden horses pumping up and down at Coney Island. Here, the ESL classes for the neighbors cursed with swollen tongues in English. There, the clinics on contraception, the pestilence in the veins of the unsuspecting. Here, the karate lessons, feet spearing the air to keep schoolyard demons away. There, the dancers in white swirling their skirts to the drumming of a bomba. Here, the workshops on Puerto Rican history, La Masacre de Ponce, where your mother's beloved painted his last words on the street with a fingertip of blood. I was a law student, first year, memorizing law school Latin, listening to classical guitar on my boom box as I studied the rules of property. It's mine. It's not yours. I saw only what could be proven by a preponderance of the evidence. The church abandoned by the church, the cross atop the church abandoned by the Son of God. My belly empty as St. Mary of the Angels, I told you I was hungry, and we left. I wanted Chinese food, but you told me about the Chinese takeout down the block where you stood behind a man who shrieked about the price of wonton soup, left and returned with a can of gasoline, splashed it on the floor, and pulled a box of kitchen matches from his pocket. Will you wait till I pick up my egg roll and pork fried rice? You said, with a high school teacher's exasperated authority. So he did. You could talk an arsonist into postponing his inferno till you left with lunch, but you couldn't raise the dead. 
in the ER at Greenpoint Hospital, even in your suit and tie. You couldn't convince the girl called Sugar to rise from the gurney after the gunshot drained the blood from her body. You couldn't persuade the doctor who peeled his gloves and shook his head to bring her back to life, telling him, do it again. An arsonist in medical scrubs trying to strike a wet match. You couldn't jump start the calliope in her heart so the carousel of horses would rise and fall and rise again. Whenever you saw the gutted church, you would see the sheets of the gurney dipped in red, all the gurneys rolling into the ER with a sacrifice of adolescence. We walked to the luncheonette on Havemeyer Street. A red awning announced, Moril soñando. To die dreaming, you said, from the DR, my father's island. The boy at the counter who spoke no English, brown as my father, called Martin like me, grinned the way you grinned at El Puente once, St. Mary of the Angels. He squeezed the oranges into a drizzle of juice with evaporated milk, cane, sugar, and ice, shook the elixir, and poured it till the froth spilled over the lip of the glass. Foam freckled my snout as I raised my hand for another. Intoxicated by Morir Soñando number three and the prophet gently rocking at my table, I had a vision. ESL classes healing the jaws wired shut by English, clinics full of adolescents studying the secrets of the body, unspeakable in the kitchen or the confessional, karate students landing bare feet on the mat with a thump and grunt in unison. Bomba dancers twirling to a song in praise of Yoruba gods abolished by the priests, the words of Puerto Rican rebels painted on the walls by brushes dipped in every color, pressed in the pages of notebooks by a generation condemned to amnesia. Morir soñando. Luis, I know you died dreaming of South 4th Street, the banners that said no to the toxic waste plant down the block or the Navy bombarding an island of fishermen for target practice thousands of miles away. Morir soñando. I know you died dreaming of a gigantes, carnival mascaras bristling with horns that dangled with the angels at El Puente. Morir soñando. I know you died dreaming of the next El Puente. Morir soñando. I know you died dreaming of the hammer's claw, the drill whining to the screw, the dust like snow in a globe, then the shy genius raising her hand in the back of the room. Morir soñando. I know you died dreaming of the poets who stank of weed in the parking lot, then stood before the mic you electrified for them and rubbed their eyes when the faces in their poems crowded there, waiting for the first word, so we could all die dreaming, morir soñando, intoxicated by the elixir of the tongue, O oh, rocking prophet at my table. Martin Espada, award-winning poet and professor of English at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Uh, tell us in your own words your, your, how you came to know Luis Gardner. I know he was not, only, not, was not only your friend, but was a friend of your father, the late uh, uh, Frank Espada, the great uh, photographer. And Juan, a dear friend of yours as well. Yes. Yes, uh, my father, Frank Espada, was indeed not only a documentary photographer, and the creator of the Puerto Rican Diaspora Documentary Project, he was a community activist. He was the founder of something called East New York Action on Blake Avenue in East New York. Uh, he worked uh, for the Lindsay administration for a while. And Luis was a political protege of my father. Um, uh, we lived in the Linden Projects of East New York, and I woke up one morning, and I must have been seven or eight years old, so this is, say, 1965, and I found Luis sprawled on the couch asleep. I woke him up, and to keep me quiet so I didn't wake up the rest of the household, he had me bring him a book. It was Macbeth. Apparently, he played Macbeth at school. He opened it up. He read these passages, and I was enthralled. 
He then asked me to memorize the same passage that he read. And then he was astonished when a few weeks later he came back and it turned out that I had indeed had memorized it. He was a personal inspiration for me over the years. When I was 20 years old, he handed me an anthology called Latin American Revolutionary Poetry, edited by Roberto Marquez. And he said, you will be a poet. And here I am.